Welcome to Believe in Chargers, part of the Believe Network. I'm Matt Money Smith here, joined by Lorenzo Neal, and doing a little bit later today. So for those of you expecting it for your Wednesday commute, either uh, to work or from work, no worries. We're here now, uh, and the game is not till Monday. So the Chargers get an extra day. We get an extra day. It's kind of the way we look at this. But a big thank you to all of you for subscribing, for rating, for leaving a comment, wherever you may do it, whatever pod cl- podcast uh, platform you prefer to procure we say a big thank you to all of you for uh supporting but if you do have a a couple seconds to just pop in a rating or leave a comment wherever it may be on youtube is where we like to uh farm a lot of the questions and we're going to get to some of those from the mailbag in uh, in a bit uh thank you and we appreciate it and if you can keep doing it that would be great make sure you follow believe bleav across all the socials. So, Lo, let's talk about the first win uh, since 2018 at Mile High, a place that you are very familiar with. And kind of what I kept saying throughout the broadcast, and I'd love for you to just share the player's perspective here, is weird stuff just happens. You know, and, yeah. and all the games I've called there, just weird stuff happens at that place. And I don't know if it's the altitude, the fans, the energy, whatever it may be, but it's just the way it's always been in the eight years I've been calling games there. Oh, no question. That place is so weird. Like you said, you fast horse run fast, but sometimes he doesn't run long. And you saw that, like the Chargers total domination, a couple fruit plays here, and Denver's right back in the end. You're like holding on to your chair. Like, how did this happen with a team that's been totally dominating? So without a doubt, man, money, like you said, some weird things happen in Mile High. I think it's the altitude. I think it's a lot of those things. And you just you it's weird. I remember a, a wrestling in Wyoming, and it's not it's a little higher. And I'm beating this guy on the mat, Money. I know here your wrestling career was very brief, but you would appreciate that. Incredible, though. (laughs) Brief, but incredible. I'm beating a guy 12 to 2 by the second round, just horsing him, taking him. At the end of the match, how about I win 14 to to 12? Because just ran out of get that altitude. You just greet you just like, man, what's going on? And it just hits you all of a sudden. And you saw the Chargers get a little winded, but man, that was a big win and they held them off. Yeah, I'll tell you the difference in in this one from other games is I never felt like they were going to lose that game. Right. Every other time I've been there, when they've had that lead in the fourth quarter, I've been like, "Oh boy, when's the other <laughs> shoe going to drop?" I know it's coming, and I and I and and that's something that we talked about. I think we've talked about it before, right? Like, there's just a different vibe with this coaching staff, with the players under this group of coaches, and it's not. It, look, yes, it starts. And it ends with with Coach Harbaugh, but I'm talking about the Greg Roman style of offense. I'm talking about the obviously the Jesse Minter defense that's been the star of the show oh. thus far. But I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. That you know they went from a 60-40 pass run split to a 60-40 run pass split in the second half, and we're playing some prevent style D, yeah. and the Broncos were able to kind of pick up on that. And Bo Nix just made some. I say stupid as a compliment, just stupid plays. You know, I mean, he's able to, to shit, you know, Bud's trying to strip sack him when oh. he should just drill him in the middle of the back and he goes down and he escapes and that becomes 20 yard play and Derwin's got him in his grasp and he escaped and look credit to Bo Nix, but it's just, you know, that yeah. sort of stuff. It's like, okay, well, you know, yeah. whatever it's, right. um, uh, it's going to happen. But I think overall my takeaway is one, never thought for a second, they were going to lose that game Two, that the first half shows you what it can look like when your tackles are healthy and when Justin Herbert's ankle is feeling better, because that's what we saw in that first half is Rashawn Slater and Joe Walter out there. That dude's not getting touched. He's moving around. He's pushing the ball downfield. He's completing everything. And it looked like a completely different offense from the last two games. Uh, no question. And you had got to give me some credit because you talked about Lad McConkey. I mean, you've been talking about this guy. I'm like, I don't know. And, and watching this guy run routes. And like you said, he and Herbert are on the same page. Yeah. They understand where to sit, when to sit down in zone, when to keep running. And just watching these guys play football, it's pretty amazing to watch a first-year receiver come into the National Football League and be as sound and technique sound and as alert and as cute as, as he's doing. It's been amazing. But like you talk about, that offense, they just create a new line of scrimmage. They were physical. You yeah. watch this offense just get after it. Herbert looked good climbing in the pocket, making guys miss. He was really, really special. And it was just good to see this team kind of just shake that monkey off the bat. 
Yeah, look, it's they're, I'm sure they're not thinking about it, especially with how many new players are there, new coaches are there. They, they don't care that they haven't won there since 2018, but I'm sure like they hear it. They see it in the in the in the press packet. It's something that maybe they brought up and addressed and and the Broncos had won three in a row and and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, and and more importantly, it counts as two and and it was a team that was in front mm-hmm. of them in the standings at 3 and 2 compared to their 2 and 2. You don't want to slip to two and three and let them get to four and two. Well, the Chiefs are at five and zero. Now you've really dug yourself a hole in the division. So the fact that they now occupy second place, that the, the Raiders are already selling off pieces and they're already writing articles about how that Tom Brady's an owner, Bill Belichick's already in line to be their next head coach. I mean, that that thing's a tire fire. So yeah, it feels pretty good. And on top of all that, selfishly for me, and you don't have to add to this if you don't want to, but you know, to heck with Sean Payton. I don't like the guy. So <laughs> I'm happy that Harbaugh beat him. And I'm happy that that his offense looked completely and totally inept until Jesse Minner called off the dogs and started playing against the clock. Yeah. So that makes me happy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Call it, hey, that, you, know, you know, it's petty, but I don't care. I don't like the guy. Hey, she, I, I like Sean. He went to Pro Bowls, men knowing Sean for a while, but I, I don't, I, I'm a hardball and I'm a Charger fan. And like you just alluded to, some of the things and how he can be in his, in his press conference, some of the things that he does, it, it makes people sometimes shake their head. I can totally understand your perspective on that. And, you know, we would be remiss in what kind of happened. You know, I know you talked about this, you know, since 18, this long hyenas, they haven't yeah. beaten one in Denver. Was Harbaugh feeling that? I mean, you saw a little scare. Go to the tent. Usually, the players go to the yeah. tent. You know, let me take take us. Yeah, that. It was scary. You know, and we didn't want to share anything. Um, you know, we really did not want to share anything with the the broadcast. Sure. And before I get to that, I do want to point out that Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything sports betting. Because we got a Thursday night football game coming up, so maybe people are thinking about it. Why not hit up Bet Online? Every stat, matchup, breakdown, live odds, spreads. You can bet during the game. So you think you're a little late? No worries. Bet online lets you get in even when the game has already started with the largest catalog of odds on everything from football, the MLB playoffs, which I'm still kind of watching just beyond the, uh, even though it's eight nothing and Otani hit a ball to the freaking moon. Um, that was one to Ellis Island. That was beautiful, even though he's in Queens. Um, when the game is over, head on over to the online casino, get in on a game of blackjack poker or check out one of their 150 plus slot games. Uh, the website is there for you. It's all the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering bet online. The game starts here. So Harbaugh, you know, is, is having a heart issue and we know it's a heart issue, but I don't want to say anything on the broadcast. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. He's, you know, we see Jesse Minter is taking control by the way, credit to Jesse Minter. He's still got to call the defense. And now he's got to take on all of these head coaching duties, which he's never done before at any level. So it's all new to him. And, you know, they're just going off without a beat, like like nothing. Um, So we then basically, when he comes back on the field, we're allowed to share. Yeah, it was was a heart issue. He's got an arrhythmia. And paramedics were called. And he was checked out. And he came back. and, And if people haven't seen it, if they don't pay attention to the uh, chargers.com pressers and stuff, you should go check out coach's presser because only he can, uh, can respond the way he responds. It is uh, quite funny. He says he has the heart of an athlete, the heart of a champion and, um, and that he is now two and O um, against ablations. And, you know, and then he said, he's going to wear a heart monitor for the next two weeks, but he checked out fine. And they said the heart's good and he may have another ablation. We'll see, but, Hopefully he he believes that yes I can I'm fine I'll I'll be good moving forward and so we're we're very happy about that but yeah it's a very strange way to start and also credit to the team your head coach is you don't know if he's is he, did he have a heart attack is he having a stroke what the hell's going on right. and they just went out laser focused bang bang executed you know twenty to nothing let's go right it it, it was it was it was amazing how you saw a team just stay focused and a lot of times you know you have a head coach you're a guy that your leader he goes down and you look on the sideline and he's not there and the guys just didn't miss a beat. You saw that offense just get in yeah. sync and just take the ball down the field, running, passing, and just doing what they need to do to show dominance. And like you talked about, you're playing against a Denver team that's been on a three-game win streak, a Denver team that's been playing good football. It's a game that people said, hey, look, Denver's for real this year. Denver yeah. is playing good football. And the Chargers, man, they went out there and they freaking dominate on both sides of the ball. And you like to see that, especially having to having a week off and you know needing this buy a timely buy came at the right time. 
and to see everyone play it and click on those cylinders, that's what this Charger team needed. That's what you have to do, especially in, in, in your conference to get a win. Like you said, that counts as two. Yeah, and I, I'm pulling up the, the stats from the game. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's, look, offensively, yes, they've been challenged, no doubt. And, and I want to make sure I reiterate that because I think their head coach is supposed to be some sort of offensive genius. <laughs> Defensively, they've been dominant. And it was very similar to what we saw from the Chiefs when they came in. It wasn't just sure. one or two guys with four sacks and this guy's got three and a half and all these pressures. No, you go down the line and it's two and a half, two and a half, one, 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 one. You know, Vance Joseph's doing a heck of a job with that defense. Yes. Now look. Pat Sertan goes down, you know, second play of the game, and that's going to change things dramatically. There's no – he's the best corner in the league. But at the same time, I'm looking at Joe Alt, 41 pass block snaps, one pressure. Rashawn Slater, 39 pass block snaps, one pressure. That's the difference. That's the difference. You you look at Pipkins and Slater and and Sawyer from the week before, and nothing again – I'm not trying to – you know, I I don't – I hate doing it, but – you're you gotta about, it yeah, you're talking about four pressures and three pressures. Like it's just, and I think it was even more than that. I feel kind of bad. No, it was um, way more than that last week against Kansas City. And you don't feel, but it's just what it is. And you're talking about two guys that are Pro Bowl caliber guys and possibly Hall of Fame type of tackles. And you right. had to go with your second and third. So you know what Joe Alt can be. And you know what Big Slater is already is. So when you're talking about these two tackles, and it it gave Herbert security. When you protect the right. outside, and you know what you can do in the middle, you're going to have success, especially with the guy like Herbert that can throw the ball, but not just throwing the ball. How about the young rookie? What about the catch, the, the real route? Watching this, the running oh, back. Oh, Vidal, yeah. Vidal, you you talked about this guy earlier in training camp. I said, what's a guy that sticks out? He said, man. Vidal, squatty, like Lil Sproles, but a little bit more powerful. You talked about this guy, Money, and you said, hey, I think this guy's going to shock some people. The guy goes down, goes on IR for the rest of the year. Vidal comes in and showing that he can be a threat in the pass game. Yeah, look, uh, Gus Edwards has been their hammer, and he goes on IR. And, you know, that's that's the belief they have in Vidal, even though he's been inactive most weeks where it's been Gus and JK and and Hassan Haskins as your third back because he's got a big role on special teams. But L comes in, man, and what number is he wearing? That, that number 30, and yeah. he's matched up with Cody Barton, a linebacker, and next thing you know, it looks an awful lot like Austin Eckler out there yes, running a wheel he route. Does. He did. He did. You know, <laughs> extending and, and catching that ball with his fingertips in yeah. stride and then using his speed to pull away for a 38-yard touchdown, the longest completion, by the way, of the season thus far for his first ever touch in the NFL. And I think, look, you see four carries for 11 yards and you may not think it was much, but you go back and you watch the carries and you see, yeah, this dude's tough, man. He's There's contact behind the line of scrimmage and he's churning his legs and he's picking up yardage, even though contact was made, you know, prior to hitting the line of scrimmage. So he's going to be in there, uh, I think, moving forward, low, and he's going to be a big part of this. No question. And you saw it. I think it was the Raiders or not, Raiders or the Jets. A, a rookie comes in, first time carrying the ball, fumble. So if you you know that this happens, man. Right. These guys stepping in a game, and all of a sudden, the, you know, JJ Watt comes in, punch the ball. So you've seen this happen with young guys and young rookies when the stage is bright and the stage is big that they make mistakes. This guy came in there understanding what needed to happen. You're facing a two games losing streak. You're stepping in on a big big stage, and you're making plays at a very very high level. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Lo, as we talk about the running game, you know, the tackles, the guards. I thought Zion had a great game run blocking. He was at he was at the second level on seem, seemingly every snap. And but really, of all the and and understand, yeah, look, Slater and Alt are a freaking force. And really, it's Slater Zion together. When Slater's playing, Zion becomes a different player, <laughs> especially in the run game. Like they become a wrecking machine of a duo. But this was Scott Matlock's best game. Like he's starting to get it, man, and you're starting to see it. And and I think you could. I mean, look, I shouldn't be the one talking about this. You should because you know how hard that position is, and you see how much they're moving him around, and how much motion there is, and there's combos, and there's solos, and there's pass pros, and like this dude was on the field for 31 run snaps, 31 or 31 offensive snaps, I should say. Right. So you're talking about almost 50 percent of the offensive plays. He's out there, and he is blocking his tail off, man. He had a seal block that sprung J.K. on that left sideline that was just textbook low. 
I see him starting to come in himself. You watch earlier in the season, the wham block where he coming across in motion. Sometimes he would come in too tight. The guy would go right around him and make a tackle. He's starting to break down, throttle his feet, head up, seeing what he's hitting. I'm watching him on contact. He's starting to move people. I see him used to run in there in the hole and stop his feet and just get a stalemate. Now he's hitting the linebackers and moving them, creating a new line of scrimmage. Like you alluded to, here's a guy that's starting to get in stride and starting to play very, very big and be the focal point in the run game. This guy's 300 pounds, a little under 300 pounds, and he's running yeah. and moving and catching the ball, but actually moving guys and, and, and blocking, pass blocking, helping out with the tight ends, helping out with the tackle, ace blocking, trade block. You're watching this guy play. He is he is playing really good football, and I think money, like you said, you're going to see this guy continue to get better. I think he's I think he's getting so good that they're I mean 31 offensive snaps, six defensive that they're starting to take some of the defensive because Tier Tart is has become a force and and he's Tier's getting a lot more snaps. He's got you know he, had, he went from like 5 and four, 4 to 6 to now he's up to 15 and I think you you know there that that interior line is you know, you, Scott got six. I'm just kind of going through the snaps right sure. now. Tito was out there for 23, Puna 28. They're running a lot of that Ferrari package with Morgan and Thule and Bud and Khalil all out there at the same time. So those guys don't have a ton of snaps as it is. I mean, Puna Ford's their number one interior defensive lineman, you know, when it comes to like that run stopping, the big body sure. like Matlock is. Right. And he only had 28 right. defensive snaps. But what I'm getting at is, you know, they thought Scott Matlock was going to be a big part of that defensive line rotation. I think he's gotten to be so valuable as a fullback. They view him as such an imperative part of their success running the ball that they're just like, hey, man, let's just – he's got a lot on his plate. Let's focus on this and and because he's getting good. He's getting I just good. feel like he's he's starting to get really good at this. He, 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 no, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. He is starting to get good, and you watch his foot. When you watch, watch when he comes across now, he's throttling down getting under control instead of just running so fast and going by guys. Some Early in the season, he was just missing guys all together. Right. Now he's breaking down. He's throttling down. He's seeing what he's hitting. You're talking about Malik is getting the footwork and the fundamentals. That's what you love to see. And defensively, I mean, I mean, watching what they're doing up front, because the quarterback, you watch what Denver has, that guy is elusive. He can make plays. He can extend plays. Guys had him dead to right. But that's what I was impressed with how this defensive front, they kept running, didn't really give up a lot of huge plays to him. But you think about the kind of in shape that you have to be because you're chasing a quarterback that's mobile, and they did a great job of keeping this guy in that phone booth in spite of him running all over the place. Yeah, you know, and, and, I'm, and I just pulled it up while you were talking about that. 15 special team snaps as well. So it's like you got, you know, 31, 6, 15. That's what he's looking at. <laughs> For the game, and and that was one of my big takeaways. The other one is is this. I, I, I get it, man, and and I want to see Brendan Rice out there as well, and I'm excited for him, and I want him to get his career started. But there's a reason why Simi Fajoko was out there, and you don't, you know, like you don't always get to see it because he blocks his tail off in the run game, and the team appreciates that, and Greg Roman appreciates that, and Coach Harbaugh appreciates that, and that's what Coach was talking about when. Uh, he was asked about the catch and he was talking about, yeah, you know, you want, uh, you see guys that are building towards something and you can feel it. And then when it happens, it's like, bang, championship play, man. And that it's a, it's a borderline three and out They're They're kind of stalling out on offense a little bit. They're deep in their own territory. Denver has flipped the field with a massive punt. And here you're on third and 10. And I mean, that's as good a catch as you're going to see. It's, you know, that, that it's a perfect, first of all, it's as good of a throw as you're going to see. There might be three quarterbacks in the league that can make that throw in that exact spot, get it over the defensive back to head right between your numbers, but you're being shielded by the defender. You're turned around, you're running full speed down the sideline and you got to catch that thing with one hand. As your old coach, Marty Schottenheimer used to say, eat the bowl of Doritos off his helmet. <laughs> And that's what he did, you know, and that's what Simi pulled off on that 30 yard game, man. And it was beautiful. Oh, it, it was, it was, it was unbelievable watching this guy. It's body control, but like you said, how hard he blocks, what he does in the run game. But here's a guy that just, you just watched him in preseason guy. You give him some opportunities, give him a chance. He's a big body. He's got a large wide range. He can go up and catch the ball. He's physical in the run game. He's hard to grab because he's, he's club guys. 
But you watch that catch. That was a huge play in the game. Huge. Yeah, it kept the clock going, moved field position. And that's what football is about. We talk about all the time, buddy. Football is about field position, ball control, field position. If you want to win games, and that's what they were able to do. Yeah. And and again, it's it came at a point where things had started. You know, you got it. Momentum is weird, man. You know, because we saw it in, in Pittsburgh and we saw it against the Chiefs where they had all the momentum going into halftime. And then it stalls out in the second half. And look, they're still looking for a second half touchdown. It's been way too long. And I'd love to see him get it this coming Monday in Arizona. We'll get into that game in a minute. But, you know, I just think, like you said, it doesn't necessarily have to be touchdowns. You no. can flip the field. You know, you can extend the drive. You can churn another four minutes off the clock, and you can give your defense a, a break. You know, and, and that's, and that's, do. that's yeah. what that's one thing that they did good in the first half was extend plays oh. because to let their defense get some rest. Because you saw the second half when you stall, you see all it's all opportunities you give an offense that has a mobile quarterback, and we'll get into that next game against Arizona. If you give guys like that opportunities and give three and outs, three and outs on your offense. That's a recipe for disaster, and so that's what they—that's what the Chargers was able to do good in the first half is ball control, keeping up the clock. So you got to keep this defense fresh. This is one of the best defenses in football. Yeah, I mean, it, by EPA, it is. It's the let's see what do we got. EPA, you have got which is kind of a it, it's a fancy it's expected points added. So um, let's see, exact, uh, but, 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 they are they are, they are they are number one overall. Yeah. Against the run in EPA, they are number two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, sixth against the pass, and they are second overall defense. Oh, wow. Uh, that's that's how good they are. And then if you just go by standard, if you want to just go by standard statistical measures defensively, they're the number one scoring defense, I think, and they're basically top five in everything else. So, would, yeah. would, would you trade that defense? Would you, give me your defense. Would you take KC, Steelers, or the Chargers? If well, you if your name, give me. Yeah. I think they're right. I think they're in that. I'm not saying they're that, but they're. I'll right. tell you what. I'll tell you. Look, people think I'm crazy because Spagnolo's. I wouldn't take their coordinator. I'll tell you that. Give, give me Jesse Minner. I'll take okay. him all day, man. That guy okay. is so like that's to me. That's. That's the straw that stirs the drink. Nothing again. I know that he would hate to hear that because it's all about the players going. But I do believe that that he is the straw that's stirring this drink. Because look, you had no Joey Bosa. You know, you have no. You had no Junior Colson, and he makes a big difference, man. And he finally got back out there. You've got, you know, and that's kind of what happened in that second half too. It wasn't just playing prevent and playing a lot of too high safety. But now Derwin's got to play nickel. Now you've got your three set. You're playing essentially dime the whole time. And Derwin's at the nickel. You've got two fifth round rookies on your outside corners and Tarheeb, who's a better net. He's really a nickel. He's not an outside necessarily. He's playing outside. Cam Hart's playing the other outside. They have barely played any snaps all season. Now Tarheeb played for John ja the last game, but in the case of Cam Hart, almost nothing. And you got AJ Finley, who's your third safety, who gets maybe, you know, 10, 12 snaps a game. And now he's out there. Full time uh, with with Aloe and Elijah and like and it's still working. So like I think that's what I'm getting. Like the they desperately need either Christian Fulton or Dean Leonard to be healthy for this game mm. against Arizona. I, I think it's a big and Ja Taylor and none of them practiced this week. Mm. So I or no, none of them practiced when we're doing this on sure. Wednesday night. Sure. They did not practice yeah. on Wednesday. So with Asante out for at least four games. What I'm getting at is, yeah, it's it's not going to be easy to kind of keep to maintain this. However, when you look at who they're playing, you know, that's kind of where things line up a little bit where like they got seven games, right? They have, let's see, uh, New England, one, Cleveland, two, Tennessee, three. The of the seven of the six teams that have one win. Chargers still got three of them on their schedule. Mm. They, they still got Tennessee, New England, and Cleveland on their schedule. Cleveland already started auctioning off their team right. by trading away Amari Cooper. You know, then they've got another one, two, three, four, <laughs> two win teams. Play the Raiders one more time, the Bengals, the Cardinals, and the Saints. Like that's mm. how this thing is lining up for them. God. So it's, in a good place. it's it's they're in a good place even though they're dealing with all these injuries. Um, 
I, it's a very roundabout way for me to answer your question. Like when I traded for other, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I wouldn't mind a defense that was a little bit more healthy right. and was, you know, as opposed to kind of what they're dealing with. But I, so, I do, I do think it, this is, this is the, um, the whole is, is more valuable than the sum of its parts. Yeah. Is kind of what we're looking at. And when you say that, and you think about Harris and you think about Harris, Marvin Harris Jr. And, and you think about, you know, the Calamari, you know, he, yeah, Calamari. Callie Murray, how do you how do you slow, what do you see this defense? You know, looking at this game Monday night is is this something that's you got to you got to account for these guys? How, how, how's this match up? In, in I'll tell opinion? you what I see. I'll tell you what I see. Low and understand people. I love my melon hats. I love them. All right, I got my white one that I like to wear. I got my brown one that I like to wear in the water because it's got the, uh, the 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 secure strap there as opposed to the snapback, and I love That's getting that. Brown nice too, baby. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I've got this one. I like wearing around town. My, uh, one with the rope because that's my formal wear, you know? Sure. So I love the melon hats. I just, uh, am a firm believer and it's something that, uh, it's part of my foundation. It's a pillar of my personality. Lorenzo, I don't believe in wearing hats at night. I just think it's like, well, you know, I, I'm a function, not a fashion guy. So <laughs> I'm not wearing a hat at night and we're doing this at night. Uh, it's just right. uh, it's something I believe in. You know, you wear a hat at night, you're hiding something. What are you it's hiding? Good. Yeah, exactly. You know? We're good. You know, you get a little. So we love melon hats. We think you'll love them too. They're durable. They're built to last five times longer than any other hat. Natural antimicrobial properties. So you don't see the sweat ring. None of that. Uh, I wear them in the water and you can see how firm this, uh, this <laughs> bill still is. And this thing's been in the water a million times. So you can get them for the the water, like I use them for. Uh, you can get them for the winter. They have their uh, they have their thermal collection. Do that, but check it all out at melin dot com. Melin dot com. We love them, and I would be wearing it like we normally do. But again, it's just part of a uh, firm philosophy I have. So it'll be interesting with Marvin Harrison Jr. Right, he's in concussion protocol. So right. if he gets cleared, the extra day will help him. I hope he's okay. Would love to see him out there. But you know, he's just kind of been a boomer bust. It, it, you know, he's had the he had the one good game against the Rams. And since then, you know, look, he didn't have anything because he got concussed against Green Bay. But, you know, seven targets, two catches against the 49ers, six targets, five catches, 45 yards and a tug against the the commanders. But they were getting blown out, you know, in in that contest. He has uh, five for 64 and a touchdown against the line. So, yeah, that's good. Look, I mean, a nice little consistent run there. We had two, three, four touchdowns in the three games. But really, it was the Rams game that was the big one. Um that said, I don't know. I don't know. I, I imagine they put Cam Hart on him. It's probably what they would do. It would probably be put the big body of Cam yeah. on him, you know, and, and that's not an easy task for Cam no. Hart. That's for certain. So um, the bigger concern is the second person you brought up, right? Because of what we saw Bo Nix do and and how he was able to run around. Man, you got those guys, they just, they went, they were way too deep on their rushes. They were way too far upfield on Bo Nix, man. They did such a great job against Patrick Mahomes right. and just making sure they were level with him the whole time and not allowing him to break. And it just felt like that happened way too often with Bo Nix. So I would assume that's something that the coach is going to clean up, Coach Mitchell will clean up because – you do it against Bo Nix, okay, yeah, he's going to get a couple yards. Right. You do it against Kyler Murray and it goes for a touchdown. Because that dude's fast. Yeah. So that is, to me, that's the number one. It's the running game. It's the running game of James Conner, who's a hammer. That's, that's going right? to ask you. That's yeah. going to ask you. What is, in, in your opinion, do you think James Conner, is this going to be the best running team they played thus far this year? When you think about the Raiders and the teams that they played, would you think that this gives the, the – the, That's the, a great call. Yeah. That's a great call, Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. I, I, I'm i a big James Conner fan, man. He runs he hard. So angry. He runs yeah. mean. It's going to be a good test. It's going to be a good test for this Chargers front because yeah. James Conner, you watch this guy. We I watched him against San Fran. He just created a new line of scrimmage. They were down by two points, got the ball on 95, and just ran it down the Niners' throat. James Conner breaking tackle. You ain't going to get him with an arm. This no. is a game that you're going to have to wrap up. You're going to have to be technique signed. You and I, we talk all about technique, alignment, and signing and technique. This is that game that you can't have your safety running in to trying to get James Conner because then, you you know, he's going to pull it, you know, he'll probably pull it, and then boom, you give him that option, and now he got a lane. you got to be technique sound. If you take bad angles, this guy can hurt right. you. Quarterback can hurt you, and the run game can hurt you. So this is going to be that D that would see – what this defense can do for us, just technique sound. And I'll tell you, Lo, how about this, man? 
So th- that's something that you and I would have talked about last year and the year before because missed tackles were such an issue with this team, man. Yeah. It was bad. I could not believe it when I pulled it up um, going into the Bronco game. And I don't know what it'll be after the Bronco game, but I don't remember too many missed tackles in that game either. Chargers defense, fourth best missed tackle rate in the wow. NFL. Just 10.5% of their tackles are missed tackles. 60% of their tackles are on initial contact. Wow. So that's awesome. Like that is something that he has coached into them. And that's so different. Now they have a completely new linebacking core. The top two tacklers on this team are Denzel Perriman and Dan Henley. And now that Colson's back, you've got a three-man rotation there. I, it is such a different interior of the offensive line with Puna Ford. He mm-hmm. has been fantastic. Here. Tart's been great. Morgan Fox next to Puna has been a great combo. Tito Abonia's playing well. So like, and we know that, you know, Thule and Khalil are exceptional on the edges, okay. as is Joey. So you've got, you know, now it's now it's up to these rookies in in heart and still to figure out like, hey man, just tackle. Just just don't get lost. And Tarheeb was really struggling with Cortland Sutton there late in the game. And, and it's like, you know, just keep your eyes honest. When you see the ball, just tackle. Just don't, don't, don't try to be a hero, jump routes and stuff like that. Just make your tackles, prevent the explosives. And that's something this team is really good at doing is preventing explosives. And I think that'll have to be, like you said, with James Conner, cannot allow him to to bust a tackle and get rolling. Because, man, once he gets downhill, just get the hell out of the way. You're going to get hurt. It's exactly. <laughs> and I think that's going to be paramount this game is for the offense. Do you want to see a great defense? If this offense can do what it needs to do, score points, jump on this Arizona Cardinals team early and just put it out of hand for you can't see James Cardinal. Make this team right. one-dimensional. Keep, keep Murray in the pocket. Don't let James Conner beat you. Don't keep it a one-score game because in the fourth quarter, they want to lay on me. This is that opportunity for this Charger team to say, okay, offensively, we got to control this, and we got to get us get a good lead for our defense can play the type of defense you see that they can play. When the right. Chargers playing defense, you let them turn them loose, they're, they're deadly. They have Look, the defense has not allowed more than 20 points this year. They haven't allowed more than 20 points in any game this year. They lost a game where they allowed 17, you know. So now I already walked you through the Chargers, number two EPA defense, number one against the run. Uh, You want to know what the Cardinals are? They are uh, fifth from last, five from the bottom overall. They are, uh, let's see, they're decent against the pass. Looks like they are, oh, no, they're not. My mistake. They are uh, bottom five against the pass, and they are, okay against the run they're 11th worst against the run so this is a defense you should be able to take advantage of it's a very young defense and you ought to be able to take advantage of it if you were able to hang 23 on the second best scoring defense in the league you ought to be able to hang 28 on one of the bottom five defenses in the league you know that's you know jk with with slater and with alt back and with herbert looking more mobile and moving around this is a game that I'd love, and I, that's the one thing that I was upset about in the Broncos game was just if they could have got one more score, if, if you know, in the second half instead of a field goal, if they get it to twenty-seven, and then maybe they get it to thirty nothing, right. maybe you can sit those guys in the second half. You can, you can, you know, bring in Heineke, you know, let Hassan Haskins and and those guys kind of start carrying the load. Bring in Foster Sorrell and Jamari Sawyer, and let Alton and and Slater get some rest and. I would have loved to see that. Now they do get the extra day, and that's great. But at the same time, this is a game that, you know, I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd, I'd love to see some domination. And it's not, you know, when you look at the Cardinals this year, it's it's out there for them, right? They, they lost to Green Bay 34-13. They lost to Washington 42-14. So it's, it's, it's out there for them to, to go get. If, if they can make it happen. Now, they just beat the 49ers, darn good team, up in San Francisco, but that's a division game that's a little bit different. Um, it is. So that's what I'd love to see. I, I, I'd love to see it. So so what I, I think that this game, that this is it for me, money, this is the trap game for the Chargers. You, you, you're never as good as you think. You're never as bad as you think. But this right. is a game where if you look at Arizona, look where they're at. They just got embarrassed, been getting embarrassed. Yeah. It's like, okay, where this is – 
it's you can't say must win because if they lose. Of course, they still can make the playoffs. But this is that point in the year where this is a must win. Like the Chargers, Denver, they needed to get that win. Absolutely, you needed, you needed that win pretty bad because not you're looking up at the barrel. So now this is that. That's that's why the Chargers and I, we know Harbaugh, we know Minner, we know these coaches. They're not going to let this team walk down there to Arizona and just get no. ambushed. And that's what this is. You got to make a team that's not good. You got to make them quit and give them no hope. Because if you let this Arizona team, because they're no now, they're fighting for their playoffs. They're looking now. Look, they're, they beat the Niners. They got the tiebreaker against the Niners. You look at Seattle, just lost. Beat the Rams. They beat the Rams. So you have a team right now. That's what I don't want. This is that yeah. prep game that this team will get lulled to sleep, which I know they won't. But that's what scares me about an Arizona team. Yeah, it's one of the one of the reasons why you're happy you got Jim Harbaugh as your head coach because you know sure. darn well that dude ain't gonna let you you know be lulled uh, and and take anything light. I'm drinking the uh, the Cherry Bundy. Love the Cherry Bundy. I know you drink it too. Uh, natural tart cherries, highest antioxidant fruit or vegetable in the world. Either fruit or vegetable. Tart cherries, antioxidant reduces soreness. I surfed twice today. And I feel great. Go yes. out and get a nighttime session and me and the sharks and the bioluminescence. Uh, increased recovery. Naturally occurring melatonin. I dropped uh, two of them because I don't like the altitude and the altitude does not like me. So I bombed two of those. Uh, the Chargers use them. So do all the other NFL teams. Ten of the last 11 Super Bowl champions. Uh, every team playing in Europe or Brazil had Cherubundi with them. But yes, I, I pounded two of them and I slept like a baby uh, all night. I absolutely love it. And there's a reason why 66 of 67 Power Four Conference football teams use it. So if you're active, if you tr have trouble sleeping, uh, these things are great and they're just antioxidants. So stay healthy, man. You know, uh, products available at Amazon, cherubundi.com. That's C H E R I B U N D I, cherubundi.com. Uh, retails nationwide, Publix, Kroger included. Uh, Lo, we got a bunch of mailbag questions. You want to knock some of these out? Absolutely. All right. Uh, a lot of talk about players getting help. This is from Hilltop Drills, which I know you love. Yes. Um, a lot of talk about players getting healthy through the bye. Herbert Alt Slater, Lo. Can you give us insight? What is actually going on week to week with health? Not specifically with the Chargers, but when uh, you play. People say players use the bye week to get healthy. They're massive. I would think no one's going to get healthy until the end of the season. Thank you both. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. Oh, appreciate you. No, you're absolutely right. You're never healthy, but you feel good enough to play. But the week of a bye week, especially when you're talking about a guy like Joel, big guy and Slater, big guys, you do need those extra days. We're not hitting. You're not in pads. You can get rest. And guys are doing the right thing. They're getting massage. They're in the ice tub. They're in the getting heat. They're getting all the different ice and stim. You get these oh, electric stim and ice. Stims. Oh, my God. Stim and ice. You know that money. You Come on. Pull. Stim and ice. It's stim is unbelievable <laughs> because it sends those shocks to the muscles and gets a, the blood flowing to those areas. Because you're in a car wreck. Every time you're in there out there hitting, your body's sore. The muscles fatigue. So, you get that stem and ice and the heat. There's all kinds of different things that rest can do for you. And a bye week, no question, came at a great time for the Chargers. We got to see them win, and they played very, very well. So, yes, the bye week, guys love it. They, uh, as you know, Lo, there's there's two sets of buses that go to the stadium uh, on game day. There's an early bus, yep. and there's one that's just slightly later, not much later. Maybe it's, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or something like that later. But there's an early bus. We go on the early bus because we got a two-hour pregame for the broadcast. And that means that unlike when they've got all seven buses going and we're, you know, all together, the, the staff and the media and all that is on their own bus, obviously not with the players in those situations. But the early bus, you know, everyone's just kind of mashed together. Coaches, trainers, right. me, players. And um, you were just talking about how big Joe Alt is. And so Joe's sitting in the seat in the row behind me on the bus and going over to, to Mile High. And, you know, I'm I'm always yeah. I'm always cognizant of my my place in the pecking order. And I always let the players get off. You guys don't need to be standing in line behind me to get in the locker room, get in there, get your stuff done. I'm not in a hurry. So I was just kind of sit and Joe's looking at me and I'm like, nah, man, go ahead. And he's like, nah, you go. And I was like, Joe, <laughs> just just go ahead, man. You're a rookie. I get it, but but go. And so as we kind of have this, I don't know, three to five second back and forth, he's like, all right. He stands up and wham, just cracks his head right on the, <laughs> right on the, the bin. And I felt so bad. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, man, sometimes being five foot ten ain't so bad. 
<laughs> did you hit him with that? Did you hit him with no, that? No, I did not. I didn't. Just, he was just, was you know, like, he just like <laughs> he might have you know, picked up and threw you out the window, right? Exactly. No. It was kind of one of those where you know when you hit yourself and you're just right. like, right. Dum, dum, dum. Right. Right. <laughs> I was right. like, oh, sorry, Joe. Go on, now. get off the bus. Uh, but yeah, he's a very large human being, and that can be a challenge when you're on a uh, on a bus and you're six foot eight. Great. Story. Um, guys, love the program. Lowe's locker room inside illuminating. Why is it that Herbert seems to prefer staying in the pocket? He holds the ball too long. He gets hurt because he doesn't move out like he used to. I believe the pure pocket passer days of QBs are in the past. Got to move out and create. Keep D lines honest. Lo, you want to start? Yeah, I, I think right now the guy's injured. You, you, yeah. you plan on a bomb will. You, you get outside the pocket and you start trying to run and get you get hurt even more. So right now he's trying to stand in the pocket and buy time, step up in the pocket. There's a guy that everyone said the days of pocket packers are over. I got Tom Brady on the phone. Yeah. I mean, there's a guy that would move two inches and get out of the way. And you and, and you it's sometimes guys move too far up, too far back, and then they run into harm's way. The pocket is very, very the pocket is like a phone booth. You can cha cha in the phone booth if you're not taking big steps. And that's what Herbert needs to continue to do in the pocket is take the small steps and just be able to get away. There's a shoulder where there's two little steps, whatever he's got to do. But at the same sense, guys have to realize if he's trying to get out of the pocket and run around right now on a bomb ankle, he could get more injured. Yeah. And I think we saw more of that in the Denver game where you see that ankle getting more healthy and he is moving sure. a little bit more. So there's a, there's a lot there, right? I think there's a lot of different things that you're, you're attacking. So I'll start with one, the pocket. Just what's the blocking assignment? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think the offensive linemen want? You, you think they want him running around all over the place, no. not knowing where their guy is? No. But no. They, they want to know, hey, this is how it's supposed to be blocked up. This is what your receivers are going to run. You're incredibly adept at working through your progressions, and you're going to find an open man because we're going to hold our blocks. And so, like, that's best-case scenario is you don't have to get. A lot of times when you get out of the pockets because you don't have good pass protectors. Exactly. Or your quarterback's too short and can't see over your offensive line. Well, Herbert's six six. Herbert's sturdy at 260 pounds. He's got a great offensive line, so the pocket's the best place for him to be. Um, the second part of that, though, is he holds the ball too long and gets hurt. There's a difference. There's holding the ball too long because you don't see it, and there's holding the ball too long because you're that good. And I think sometimes that's that gets in Herbert's way, is he knows how strong – he made a throw in that game against Denver – that, that no one can make, that that he, Josh Allen, and, and Patrick Mahomes are probably the only guys they can make. He is backpedaling. He's under duress, and he's going backwards, and he throws on a rope from outside the right hash to outside the left numbers for a 10, 12-yard completion. Like, it's those plays that he can make that can get him into trouble. Like, he, how did he hurt the ankle? Against a Panthers team when they were up 25 points, and it's like, just get rid of the ball, man. And I think there is a little bit of that with him because he's just that guy. He's the guy that believes this is the way football is supposed to be played. I need to make that, you know, my guys are blocking for me, so I've got to stand in here and deliver this pass as opposed to I'm just going to throw it away. And he's, and he's I do tough. think there is some of that in him. He's, he's money, you're spot on. The guy's tough. And, yeah, the fans want yeah. to see this guy not get hurt because they understand right. this season is this team rise and falls. Exactly. So we get that, too. But the guy's tough, money. That's what you're talking yeah. about. This guy is tough, and this is who he is. He believes in himself, and yeah, at times he can hold it long, but he's tough, and he's built. Yeah, us. and I, I do think there is something to that, though, where you have to play that that Panthers play back to him and say, you're too valuable, man. Like, I get it. If it's a one-score game or we're down or it's the final two minutes, okay, but we're up 20. Right. Get rid of the ball, right. dude. Just get rid of the ball. It's been three seconds. There's nothing out there. It, we're good. We're good up 28 to three instead of going up 35 to three. It's fine. Uh, this one's for Low Neal. Hardest defender you had to block back in your day. One teammate and one opponent. Yeah, I tell you, man, I hated you talk about Denver. There's a guy because I hated blocking against guys short like me. But blocking against Ray Lewis, uh, those guys taller, <laughs> six three, six four, Erlacher. I put them on skates. I could dominate <laughs> all of them. Because, because you know, I'm right. sporty body. Leverage. Leverage. Give me, I hated like Zach Thomas. Hated Al Wilson. Because they, you know, Al Wilson's fist yeah. when you get Jesse Tuggle, Sam Mills. I was going to say, Sam's got to be in there. <laughs> yes, yes, Sam, I am. So those shorter guys, it was just like, God, they gave me fits. Give me the six foot two, six foot three. Right. And let me at them. Uh, do you think the Chargers should try to get Mike Williams back? 
Uh, if he is available for trade or winds up being cut, most of our draft picks hitting this year, do you think he's worth giving up a late rounder for? Uh, but that could be another Vidal or Cam Hart. I, I do think they will, you know, reportedly they were in conversations to sign Mike before he took the $10 million deal with the Jets. So I'm sure that Joe Hortiz is exploring that. Look, Fajoko played the Mike Williams role brilliantly on that one catch, but I do think they would love to have that big body target for the red zone. That's that's what they're I, I do think they need that because as great as Q is at what he's doing and they're putting him in the right spots now, that's not necessarily where he's the most comfortable. Those 50 50 balls, those short, you know, the fades that that, that Mike is so good at that. And yeah. Um, yes, I'm sure that both the Chargers and the Chiefs are going to be in a bit of a bidding war for for Mike. And I don't know what. It, and the nice thing is. He's a free agent at the end of the year. You know, the whole comp pick formula comes into play. So if you trade uh, a fifth or a sixth for him or whatever it may be, maybe you get it back because he has a huge year because Justin and he have that great chemistry. And I would assume he'd be a favorite target of Justin's if he came back here. So, yes, I, I think it makes a lot of sense for, for Mike to come back. No, with, with saying Mike, because I, I think it would help too having a, another better receiver guy. That's you know, they just need that X. They need that X low. Yeah. Do you think if that if if you had a receiver, is that your most pressing? Is it receiver, running back? Where's for you? Well, like it's corner right now, right? And they right. already signed Eli Apple to the practice squad, right. so I assume yeah. he's probably going to be active. They get him up to speed, and 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 Jesse's comfortable putting him out. Coach Mentor's comfortable putting him out there. But you know, look, DJ Chark started practicing, so his twenty one day window is open now. So. That may be your answer. Like they may not need Mike. You may have you might have Chark active on on Monday, and he lights it up because that's what they need. They need that four three guy. And look, he, Chark is faster than Mike, but you know he's not quite as big, but he's still big. I mean, Chark I think is still six over six feet. He's probably two hundred pounds, so he's still a big dude. Mm-hmm. And he's got some speed and can play that outside receiver. Um, so that's that could be the answer for do you trade for Mike or do you just drop DJ Chark in there and. You're good to go. Um, but yeah, it's corner, right? Oh, yeah. It's right it's now. corner. It's and look, these teams are gonna start auctioning off these players. You're already seeing it, yeah. right? right? Devontae Adams is gone, Mari Cooper is gone, Mike Williams is gonna be on the move. But you look at you know, I mentioned their schedule, and we talked about this last week, so I don't think we need to like necessarily rehash it. I think we did. Like, look at these one win teams. They're gonna start right. moving players, you know, they're just going to. The the trade deadline is in like three weeks. So Jacksonville. Carolina, New England, Cleveland, the Rams, Tennessee, you know, they're going to start moving players. And I'm sure that Joe Hortiz is on the phone because he's already shown that he likes making trades. He likes picking guys up. He's already swapped out a couple players on the practice squad. Blank, uh, Blake Lynch is out. He's got a new tight end in. Like, they're churning, man. They are, they are moving guys in and out and in and out. And so uh, I think that's... You know, that's that's something that I will not be surprised. And I'm sure he's making a call. Yeah, they signed Eli Apple, uh, McAllen Castles, released Blake Lynch. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, they're, you know, Nick Neiman just got brought up, you know, from from injured reserve. He's their best special teams player. So, like, guys are starting to kind of mm-hmm. – it's it's a two-way street. There's some guys that are getting hurt. Some guys are coming back. So, DJ Chark comes back. Nick Neiman comes back. Unfortunately, you know, Hayden Hurst goes down. I, will Disley didn't practice today. I don't know what's going on there. So. There's a lot. Um, let me see what's the injury report say. Uh, they didn't. Oh, that's right. It's. Uh, yeah, I should have posted it, but it's not up. Um, so here we go. Uh, more mailbag. Where'd it go? Where are you, mailbag? Darn it. Find it. There it is. Um, Money, what's your overall takeaway from how the defense has progressed over the past five weeks? And do you believe Derwin is being optimized in the scheme? I think we talked about that a little bit. I mean, he was pressed into playing nickel because yes. everybody got hurt. Um, and I feel like we've kind of dug in Nick. I appreciate the question, Nick Diaz. Um, but I feel like we kind of dug in to a lot of that as far as just Derwin specifically, man, he had a nice couple series. He had one where he pressured the quarterback, uh, Bo had to get rid of it, threw it into the dirt. It was a perfectly set up screen, but Derwin's pressure kind of blew it up. Otherwise they were going to have a pretty big gainer on that. And then he tipped the ball, uh, that was going out into the flat, like two plays later. So, and he almost had a sack. Nick's just kind of escaped him, but I don't suspect he'll allow that to happen again. So I feel like Derwin's been playing fine. That's just the, the the splash plays aren't there right now, but they're coming. He's got a sack. He's got a couple passes defensed. So I feel like they're coming. 
Yeah, he's playing good football. They expect a lot of Derwin, and Derwin expect a lot of himself. But uh, be patient. This guy's going to make some plays. We yeah. Know. I mean, I think about it. Their nickel goes down, and they take their essentially what they prefer to be their box safety and drop them in the nickel. And it's like, yeah, he's fine. Just right. go do that. Just go play. Just go play nickel. Not a big deal. Um, all right, here you go. What's the one thing you're convinced about this 2024 Chargers team that most people would disagree with you? Yeah. That is from uh, Dave Wilk. I'm convinced. I don't think people would disagree. I think that they, this team has heart. I think, I think the motivation and the motor that this team has shown, like you said in the previous years, quit. There have been in every single game. I, 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 as far as disagree with, I don't think there's a lot of things that, uh, like you said, corner right now, I don't I think people would, would agree they need a corner. So I don't think there's a lot of things that people would disagree with. I think they might disagree. They might want to see more throwing, Herbert throwing the ball more. So they might disagree with the run game right now. Uh, might want to see Herbert air it out more, maybe the quick game. Um, but I think this team is playing pretty solid ball considering all the things they've been through. I was, I'm trying to think of an answer, and I'm, I'm right. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, huh. The only thing I can, the only thing I can think of, is, um, yeah, boy, right. Yeah, I don't know. I Listen. think because I, I, I don't want to say anything crazy. Like I've already talked about how highly I think of of Ladd McConkey. And like, I would say, I think their receivers are a lot better than people think they are. But at the same time, I do think there's a hole there that they need to fill. Like the one thing I would say is I think this is one of the best linebacker rooms. Those three guys, Dayon, Denzel and junior. When you look at a lot of teams, you know, a lot of times bad defenses, your safeties, your leading tacklers, you know, this is a team where your linebackers are sound. They're good in coverage. They're great against the run. Like, you know what? Here you go. And I've got the and and yeah, the stats back me up, so people might not push back. Like, this is one of the best run defenses in the NFL, and that's crazy to say because of how bad their run defense has been in past years. Like, they are good at the freaking point of attack. They're good at filling gaps. They're good at setting the edge and making sure guys don't don't break. It's a really really good run defense, yeah, and that is something that we. You think people will disagree with you on that? See, that's, I just think historically they've been like the worst right. run defense okay. in the league for the last five, six oh, years. So they're like, oh, true. come on. It's the same guys. A lot of the same guys. It's like, yeah, but it's just different, man. These guys, right. It's like legitimately this team shuts down the run. Now watch James Conner's going to run for two hundred yards. <laughs> uh, will the Chargers – let's wrap this thing up. Will the Chargers go back to their navy blue uniforms? Low? Oh, I don't think they'll go back. But they'll probably throw them in for a, a game, right? You got to throw them back. This I know it's going to – it's going to – it's a real – Real uh, kick to your gut. I don't like the navies, man. Okay, you, didn't and, like you know, the like, and I and I appreciate the era of the navies. Yeah. Obviously, the your your era of Charger football, but right. right, I just you know my ranking is Royals number one, yeah. Powders number two, navies. You know, that's just my preference. Yeah, I, I it has like nothing to do with the guys wearing the uniform. It's just right. the aesthetic of how it looks. Yeah, it looks different. The powder, the powder. I, I, you, you can't, you can't disagree with what you just tell. You laid it out. I'm just. See, saying. I like foils. I like the Dan Fouts, Chuck Muncie. Oh. I like that shade. Do you? Yes, that's my okay. favorite. But that's because of you know I'm kind of old. You're an old and man. So, yeah, right. yeah, like you know, <laughs> Miracle in soft. Miami. <laughs> like those were my. Those, those were the, I was a little kid. I was a tiny little kid, you know, when those teams were playing and I was just getting into NFL football and I love the lightning bolt and I love oh, those you, Royal blues, man. You, I'm with you. Chuck Muncy with the one single bar. Exactly. You know, Glasses and the Jerry curl. Yes, and the, yes, it's yes. the best, you know, man. The curl, baby. He had Come the on. curl. Oh my it's God. Best. And James Brooks, baby. Lionel exactly James. Exactly right. Oh, exactly baby. right. Oh, I loved I, it, bro, man. I, I'm with you. Money, you and I grew up kind of the same here. I absolutely Love yeah. the Kellen Winslow, Tony. You know, yes. Kellen Winslow, you know, Chuck Bambi. Love, I oh get it going, goodness. man. Oh, the receivers love those guys, man. Yeah. There, you know what? There you go. Uh, that's uh, that's the one thing that I'm convinced that uh, most people disagree with is that uh, <laughs> the Chargers alternate should not be Navy. It should be Royal. There we you go. know, and I'm upset that they got rid of the Royals this year. And I told John Spanos as much. It's like, John, what are you doing to me, man? You're killing me. It's like money. Yeah, people like the powders. Right. They love the navies. You they love you the say, navies. Oh, you know. It's like they love the navies. I was like, I know they love the navies, but I love the royals, John. And this is about me. You got the head okay. shaking, just like I'm, I'm gonna give my heart. I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna tell them about that. Yeah. So, all right. There's your mailbag. There's your preview. There's your uh, review. 
Cherubundi, Melon Hats, Bet Online. Thanks to our sponsors for allowing us to keep this thing going. And thanks to you, the listeners. And uh, yeah, here's to a, a good Monday nighter, the late Monday nighter. Remember, there's two Monday night games. So uh, we got the late one. Thank God it's in Arizona and I won't be going to bed at 5 a.m. Exactly. That'll be hitting the pillow at about 2 a.m. So that'll be nice. Um, and yeah, go Dodgers. Big victory in game three as I watched the uh, final two innings. They went eight nothing. So love that. Otani hit a ball uh, as hard, probably as hard as I've seen since. Well, I wasn't there in person. I was there in person when Barry Bonds hit that donger off Troy Percival in 2002, and I've never seen anything like it. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I was right behind home plate, too. I was like just to the – I was behind the Angels, uh, behind the third base side, uh, just on the, uh, you know, great seats, yeah, right right field level, or just field level, right behind uh, – home between home plate and the dugout, like I, the on-deck circle. And, man, when Troy Percival came in in the ninth inning, I was with my little brother. Yeah, I was like, Brandon, pay attention to this man because it's gonna be special right here. We got a guy throwing really? 98. Oh, oh yeah, I was oh, like, we got not. a guy throwing 98. And we got Barry Bonds, and he's coming after him because Troy will not walk him. I promise you that. And he hit that damn ball, and I swear it 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 went into the hobo camp in the river in Anaheim <laughs> outside that stadium. He hit it so hard, it was incredible. I mean, it was it was really, and that's what that thing looked like <laughs> from oh, Tony. I was like, oh damn. All right, that's a lot. Uh, that's great, that's good stuff, great. Low. Oh, you're the best, and, brother. You're uh, the best. Yep. Yeah, we'll be back again next week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And thanks to Lindsay for rallying here at night to uh, to help us out with all of this. We appreciate you, Lindsay. All right. right.